Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, America, here we go again, because we didn't have enough with wide open triggers or forced reset triggers or solvent traps or anything else that was included in the first couple versions of Operation Reticent Recall. Now, you may recall that what got everything rolling on that was some raids by the ATF on some manufacturers, distributors, and stuff such as that. Well, guess what? It's happened again. And so today we're gonna have to talk about a new device that we've never talked about before. It's the Hoffman Tactical Super Safety. Some of you may have one. Some of you may have just downloaded some of the blueprints. Either way, it appears that the ATF is getting a little pissy about it. So today we're gonna have to slow it down. We're gonna have to geek out. And unfortunately, we have to talk about how the ATF is getting triggered Again. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be talking about the Hoffman Tactical Super Safety, which I will get to in just a moment. A couple of caveats about this video. Yes, I understand there has been a raid. We will talk about that by ATF. I'm not passing judgment on any of the manufacturers or retailers here. I candidly do not know enough about this product. I am in no way saying that they are building illegal products. And merely because the ATF believes they are, we all know that that is not the criteria by which we should be judging. I also am trying to put a bunch of dots connect a bunch of dots here together so that we can understand it. What dots am I trying to connect? I'm trying to connect something I read on AR15.com in the forum section, this post right here, as well as some conversations I had with two of my viewers, uh, Matt and Travis. They reside in different parts of the country than out here in Washington, both really, really nice guys. Had an opportunity to have conversations with them. And I understand that there's been a raid that raid is likely going to uh, result now in what's going to appear to be another version of Operation Reticent Recall, and it's going to be for anybody who has one of these devices. Now, as I mentioned, I don't know much about the Hoffman Tactical Super Safety, so I have to rely on what they say on their website, which reads as follows. The Super Safety is a 3D printable active trigger system for the AR-15. An active trigger is one which actively resets, allowing faster, more efficient follow-up shots. The Super Safety is a push-button safety that replaces the standard safety on an AR-15. Two and three position versions are included. The Super Safety is compatible with any AR-15 that uses a mil-spec fire control group and bolt carrier. Modification to the trigger and detent is required. So it would appear that this operates in under much of the same principles as force reset triggers and wide open triggers and things such as that, bump stocks as well, which is, yes, this definitely does increase the rate of fire in which the shooter can achieve. However, there is still a single function of the trigger for each round that is discharged. Now, we all know that doesn't constitute a machine gun. The ATF certainly has not gotten that memo. And if you don't believe me, again, just take a look at the bump stock litigation. Well, what got us going down this road was this post, like I mentioned, on AR15.com, which reads, It has been brought to our attention that the super safety are now deemed machine gun devices per ATF. The raid on Twin Brothers LLC was over the super safeties and not the pepper jacks. We are no longer allowed to sell super safety kits. We are sorry about all of the unfulfilled orders. Okay, now here's the rub. Hoffman Tactical, their super safety, is actually a 3D printable device which they provide or sell the blueprints, the schematics, whatever it's called, to print this device. They specifically state on their website, as with our other designs, the super safety is intended to be 3D printed by the end user. We do not manufacture or sell the super safety. This is a great reason for you to get into 3D printing. And it's also a great way to taunt the ATF. It's like walking up to a hornet's nest that's not buzzing in, whack it with the stick a couple times and see what happens. So for, if you purchased software from Hoffman Tactical, designs or things like that, you're in one category. But you see, 
it appears that another company, this Twin Brothers LLC, yeah, they had actually started printing these things. In fact, they were making metal versions and they have been raided, which tells me that the ATF now has shipping records, purchasing records, all of that stuff, just like they did with the diversified machine with the solvent traps, just like they ended up getting from gun broker and from rare breed and all of that on the forced reset trigger. So what happens now if you have one of these devices? We're gonna break you into two categories, okay? Number one, you just downloaded the blueprints, the schematics from Hoffman Tactical. There is no way on God's green earth that the ATF would ever be able to establish that you printed one of these devices. If you did, I want you to pay careful attention to what I'm gonna tell the other people. Would I remove the software from the computer at this point? Listen, the likelihood that the ATF's gonna end up with a search warrant that gets to go through your laptop or other computers, highly, highly, highly unlikely, but hey, better to be safe than sorry. I'd probably go ahead and remove the schematics from the computer. now. If you made one of these devices or you purchased one of these devices, listen very carefully. If you have not received a letter from ATF, which I doubt any of you have, cut it up, cut it up right now, okay? Cut it up right this second, all right? And take the remnants and throw it away. But when you cut it up, what I want you to do is I do want you to document the destruction of that device. Just like I had people do with their FRTs and their wide open triggers and their solvent traps, we want to see the destruction of the device documented either through photos or video. Again, without a letter from the ATF, you just go ahead and throw the remnants away. Now, if you do have already received a letter from the ATF, all bets are off at this point. I don't want you cutting it up because now we're getting into arguably destruction of evidence. We're not in any trouble at the current time. Let's not create trouble. That's an opportunity to talk to local council. If you need to talk to Washington Gun Law so that we can get you connected with local council, you'll know how to do that, okay? Now, with the data of you destroying the device, either you should securely store it or you can contact local council, have them store it for you. And then if, if you receive a letter from the ATF and all the letters, or they're all the same when it came through on Operation Reticent Recall versions 1.0, 2.0, which is we have reason to believe that you are in possession of an unlawful machine gun or an unlawful suppressor as it was in the case of the solvent traps and we need to speak with you right away. Listen, I do not encourage people to actually go out and speak to the ATF themselves, all right? They are there to investigate whether or not you are potentially engaged in criminal activity. They are not there showing up with a big check like they're the publisher's clearinghouse. So once again, if ATF actually reaches out to you, you need to contact counsel right away. Again, you can contact Washington Gun Law and we can get you connected with more local counsel that would fit your needs. So bottom line, if you got one of these, there could be letters coming, cut it up, document it, throw away the remnants, securely store that data or provide that data to an attorney of your choice. We will obviously keep our ear to the ground so that we can figure out what if anything is gonna happen. Obviously the ATF was dying of boredom so they decided they needed to go out and create a new rule out of midair. So we found again, another tiny little piece which standing alone apparently constitutes a fully operational machine gun. If you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our second amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is down there in the description box. And then let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.